Yeah, today we got a uh, 1996 uh, Chevrolet Kodiak dump truck. Uh, she's got a lot of miles on her, a lot of history. Still runs good, got a little cat in it. This guy um, only uses it for local runs and mainly his own home maintenance projects that he's working on. But he uh, needed quite a bit of work. We put new tires on the front, the last thing we did, but <clears throat> had uh, other issues that we have already taken care of. But one of the problems that it had was a bad, bad shimmy. Actually, uh, I would categorize it as a, a death wobble. Um, it would come in around 35 miles an hour, hit a bump with one wheel or the other, and it would start to shake violently. Uh, you step on the brakes and slow down, and you could get it to go away. Uh, sometimes at 25 miles an hour, you hit like a pothole and it would start to shake so bad you'd have to bring it to a stop. You guys that put lift kits in your Jeeps and Fords and Chevy trucks and stuff, you might have experienced it one time or another. Uh, but we call it a death wobble. Now, <clears throat> this one here, I'm going to go underneath and show you what we did. Just got to pause the video. So, this old buggy um has uh a, about a 5 8 spacer on this side and about a 3 8 spacer on the other side this side here may be actually closer to three quarters of an inch but what we did to correct it is we put these shims in the axle from from the base plate of that uh, spacer to the axle itself. So what it does is it goes in there and as you can see it goes from thick to nothing at the back. This is a three inch, uh, I'm sorry, this is a three degree shim. It's about uh, 15, I think it was 15, 16 bucks a piece for those. When we got done, we put the new uh, the new U-bolts, uh, call them gripes if you will, but the new U-bolts, you want to make sure you get done. After you make all your adjustments, take it apart, put it together, the final thing you want to do is put new bolt, new U-bolts and nuts and washers on this thing. You run it down the road, hit a few bumps, come back, and then re-torque these to the specific torque that they call for. Don't just gun them on with an impact because you stretch the bolt and it's no longer any good. I'm going to pause again for a second. Okay, my reason for making this video is that I couldn't find anything good on the internet to try to explain to the customer what I had to do. And I actually had a confusing talk with the alignment shop. We sent it to the alignment shop first to see what they what they had for for numbers and the truck actually came in to the right numbers as far as specs it was right on the edge as far as caster but they said that it should be fine well, we're talking about an old truck and we went through and checked every bolt and nut we checked all the bolts and the cross members make sure there's no cracks in the frame we actually had to change the steering box on this thing because the the shimming was so bad that it actually tore up the, the steering box. So what we're going to talk about is caster. Now what we ended up doing, the front end alignment shop or my tech, one or the other, got the wires crossed and the first thing he did was he put this shim in from the back. Well. He had me go road test it. I took it down the road and now, doing that, we couldn't go 15 miles an hour with this thing. It would start to shake by itself. And if you hit a bump at 10 miles an hour, it would take the wheel right out of your hand. So I came right back. I told him, hey, you put the shims in backwards. No, I didn't. That's what they said. Well, okay, never mind the argument. The fact is, we need to go negative on the caster, not positive. Now explain that a little bit try to imagine the inclination of your 
of your kingpin. When I say inclination, I'm talking about the relationship of the, the top of the kingpin versus the bottom of the kingpin. Which way the pin, if I can hold this phone, which way the kingpin is angled. If it angles this way or if it angles this way. That's the inclination of the kingpin. Now, when we put the shims in properly in the front of the axle, we're actually wedging the axle down in the front and up in the back. Now, if you picture that over here, you're actually flexing this this way. So you're, you're turning that kingpin angle. Now, the top of it is going forward and the bottom of it is going back. This is going to be negative caster. Now, why is that important? Because the center line from the top of the kingpin to the bottom of the kingpin, picture it about the center of the axle. If you look at that point, from the point of the contact patch of the tire, negative caster, we're pushing the contact point back. So the tire is going to have a tendency to follow the truck. Instead of having it forward, trying to have the tire lead the truck. It, it acts the same as a grocery cart. And everybody who's ever gone to the store has pushed a grocery cart one time or another. But the caster was damaged and it just wobbled and, and it took its own direction as you went. So <laughs> the reason why I made this video, if anybody's got any questions, they can call me. But... I didn't see any explanation on trucks. I saw a lot to do about Jeeps and uh, off-road vehicles, that type of thing. I thought there's an awful lot about sports cars and race cars. And I, I've done a lot with stock car racing over my years. And I understand the concepts of caster and camber and camber gain and bump steer and all anything you want of that stuff. But this is an old truck. And at some point... It uh, probably met the specs from factory, but now everything's a little bit worn. Who knows? Maybe these springs are a little bit tired. Something changed. Something changed in the angle of approach. So we we put the three three degrees in. I just took that as a wild guess. They had twos. They had threes. I said, let's go and do it. We want to do it so, to make it work. So we put three degrees in. And then no problem. This thing goes down the road just like a brand new truck now. I mean, it's not. It's an old, old truck. But it goes down the road just like a new one. And if you have a problem, let's say an old farm truck or, or uh, some kind of special application that's just really shaking really bad and you can't figure it out and everything else is tight, do your diligence. I mean, check every bolt, nut. Somebody's always got to be making noise when I try to make a video. It's one of my records coming in to be worked on. Um, stop and think about it. Do some, do some testing. But in this particular case, I needed to go negative on the cast, on, negative on the caster to make this work. Now that being said, when I got done, I'll go back up and show you the steering wheel. This video. I'm out back here again. I had to get interrupted for a minute. But just a, another little point of interest. When you change the ca caster like that, it changes where the relationship of the uh, the uh, pitman arm and the axle uh, are. Okay, so it either moves it away from it or moves it toward it, which uh, which would mean it changes the where the position of the steering wheel is. So when my man first put the three degrees in. From the rear and and added positive caster to it I went down the road this is where the wheel started off when we came in it was actually right straight on so changing the caster made the wheel about like that so like I said before it was shaking like ten times worse so we came back and switched it and then when we put the caster negative went down the road and the wheel was like this but the truck drove perfect so Mike took the wheel off and just reset it onto the spline and centered it so that you will have to do that when you're done happy motoring